Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Ask Brian Chang. Today, we'll continue with our e-image sharing. Among all my e-image sharing, this will be the second most important sharing session. If you have not seen my others e-image sharing, please watch all of them before you come to this one, else you'll be very confused. Because you need to have the e-image fundamental knowledge before you come to this sharing. Let's begin. Consolidated e-image is needed when you are doing B2C. IRB allows suppliers to consolidate the transaction with buyers who do not require an e-invoice as proof of expenses into a consolidated e-invoice on a monthly basis. Buyer will not able to use this transaction for tax purpose. In short, for certain transaction, example, a housewife buy vegetable in the market, she do not require an e-invoice for tax purpose. So the supplier can just give her receipt or just normal invoice, but the supplier will then need to consolidate all these transactions into one consolidated e-invoice and submit to LHGN once in a month. Meaning for B2C, there will be two scenarios. The first scenario is a customer come over, he require an e-invoice. Then supplier need to obtain the buyer's details, issue an e-invoice, submit to LHGN, get the approval and pass the validated e-invoice to the customer. The customer can then use it for tax purpose. Scenario two, a customer do not require e-moist. Supplier just need to give him a receipt or normal e to record this transaction. Buyers will not able to use this normal e for tax purpose. Then buyers need to consolidate all this e into a consolidated e -invoice. In scenario one, where buyer require e supplier need to get all this information such as buyer's name, buyer's TIN, and if the buyer is a Malaysian, supplier need to get the buyer's TIN number or buyer's MyCard number or both TIN and MyCard number. For non-Malaysian individuals, supplier need to obtain the buyer's TIN number only or both TIN and also passport number. Buyer's address, buyer's contact number, buyer's email. If buyer is not a SSD registrant, just put an A. If the buyer only give you TIN number, the registrant number or MyCard number, just put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 12, 0. If buyers give you the my card number or passport number, then you just need to enter EI 00000090 and 10. This is an example of a e invoice. You can see that there will be digital signature, date and time of validations, and most important, the QR code. For scenario two, Buyers does not require e invoice, so you just give him a normal invoice or receipt and consolidate it into a e invoice. Supply will be allowed to aggregate transactions with buyers who do not require an e invoice on a monthly basis and submit a consolidated e invoice to IRB within seven calendar days after the month end. Meaning that you consolidate all normal invoice for the month of November and submit to IRB as a consolidated e invoice before 7th of December. There are two ways. First, you can summarize all the receipt and bills invoice as a separate line item in the consolidated e-invoice. Second, all these invoice can be presented as a single line in a consolidated e-invoice. Please remember, the buyer can request for an e-invoice from the supplier within the same month after they receive the normal receipt or invoice. Meaning today one customer come and buy things from you and say, I do not require e-invoice. So you give him a normal receipt or normal invoice. Within the same month, then he come back and request for e-invoice. You must able to give him a proper e-invoice. For consolidated e-invoice, the buyer's name just put general public. Buyer's team, EI9010. Buyer's registration number, put NA. Buyer's address, put NA. Buyer's contact number, put NA. Buyer's email put NA, buyer's SSD registration number put NA, description of product and services put the receipt or invoice number for individual transaction. And if there is branches, summarize them as a individual line. If you have branches, all the transactions summarize as an individual line or put everything together in one line. For branches, you need to separate them into different lines and quantity just put one. This is a sample of consolidated e-invoice by putting all the receipt or invoice as one line in your consolidated e-invoice. This example show that individual receipt represent as different line or different row in a consolidated e-invoice. And this example show that you have a pinning branch transaction as one row and then Kuala Lumpur branch 
transaction as another row. After understand how consolidated e-invoice work, it's time for you to look back at your own company transaction, whether will it involve consolidated e-invoice or not, because consolidated e-invoice will have a very huge impact to your business. Please like, comment, and most important, please help to share out this video. It will be a very big impact, especially for small seller. Because normally for small seller, you may ask your freelancer to help you do your invoice once a month or even once a year. In e-invoice era, you cannot do this anymore. You need to do your account, especially on the sales or invoice side daily. So you need to change your company operation to suit to e-invoice requirements. That's all for today. See you in the next video. Thank you.